on Brusho in the past. Um, more stuff that takes advantage of the multiple colors within each color properties that Brusho has. I, I love that. I haven't. I have not gotten to play with that kind of stuff in a while. Now, um, Brusho comes in boxes like this. I have the 24 pack. They come in other sizes. Um, and I've already done an unboxing video. I just wanted to start this video off. For those of you who are new to my channel, your Brusho might look like this. And many crafters put a hole in the top with a push pin and remove the push pin when they want to sprinkle it. Well, you know, I can't, I can't do... I have to make things difficult. So I put my brush out in tiny little shakers. And uh, I have a tutorial on that if you're interested in, in doing that to yourself. So I have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Wait, really? Only 11? I guess they're gonna count this. But I have an 11 plus one well uh, paint palette and I have another one in my bathroom drying off. And I never actually uh, swatched Brusho as, um, as like mixed colors. If that makes sense, I've only um, sprinkled them on paper and sprayed water on them, right? So I am not 100% sure how everything looks. So that's light brown. It's a little bit of water to hydrate it. It's a water brush. Mix it all up. So that's light brown. See, I never intended on um, using brusho to paint with as it is. Uh, or rather mixed up in a palette like this. I have plenty of paints. I brusho is not convenient enough to haul around for me to, to do it that way. Cleaning off the brush. So I never, um, I didn't swatch it, but I've gotten interested in making my own, my brown, making my own um, alcohol inks. So I thought it would be neat to use a dye based watercolor substance like brusho as my coloring agent. That's one of the reds. What red are you? Oh gosh, that's the weird named red. What a boo boom. All right, water brush. So I wanted to see how the colors look. These are dye-based watercolors, and I think they're the only dye-based watercolors that I knowingly have in my studio. I'm a watercolor artist, and I usually prefer to paint with pigments because they're less fugitive, but I was looking for something that was kind of fun and kind of lighthearted um, to sort of mix things up. So these dye-based watercolors have made their way into my studio. And um, I haven't really played with them too much yet. I've done some watercolor textures uh, for when my backers unlock that particular goal. We have some downloadable watercolor textures that I've been working on. But um, other than that, I haven't really played with them too much. So this is me mixing them up and swatching them. And this is also to get an idea of what the colors look like. So when I mix them with alcohol ink or when I try mixing them with alcohol ink, um, I can, uh, you know, I'll know what I'm getting. And with brusho, a little bit really goes a long way. I mean, this was just like a little sprinkle and you're getting very intense colors. Good old fashioned yellow. And you can of course add more water. I'm just trying to see what the colors look like. And as long as the pigments or rather the dye particulates don't settle out, this should be a good option for homemade alcohol inks. My first go was with concentrated watercolors and some worked better than others, of course. Um, and that video should be up by the time this video is up. So you can check that out for yourself. That's Vermilion. And I know some people use Kool-Aid, but I wanted um, something that's just a little closer to professional grade and also won't attract ants. And Kool-Aid attracts ants. 
and some people use Rit dye, but I actually don't have any dye. So um, I wanted to use stuff I had in my studio that maybe other uh, watercolorists or even marker artists might have in their studios. My purple is intense. It like got into my brush and it doesn't want to clear out. I might have been better off with a water cup. It picked up one of the particles. There we go. Got it. And I would love to do some light fast tests with Brusho at some point in the near future. Springs around the corner, so maybe that's something I can do. Leaf green. if you allow brusho to evaporate the way you can with other watercolors if you can rehydrate it like I wonder how many times the circle the cycle can be repeated all right that's lemon but I think it got it got contaminated all right I gotta clean that well out so there's a little bitty bit of green and that's really a problem with brusho is it's messy and if you get a little bit of contamination, it basically ruins the whole well. So, toss that and reapply. Hopefully, my brush didn't have too much green on it. Looks all right. Now, the nice thing about brush show is, as I said earlier, a little goes a long way. But also, um, shoot, I was thinking I got distracted by a thought. Um, so what I was thinking is I had watched a tutorial where somebody um, used RIT dye, powdered RIT and uh, liquid RIT to make alcohol spritzers. And um, I was just thinking to myself, I wonder if I'm going to have to use a little bit of water to get the colors going or if they'll go in the alcohol gonna have to be something I test. Okay, that's emerald green. And we can fit one more on this palette. Prussian blue. So I should hold it out and that way I know. Prussian blue is not as intense as I would like. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go get a fresh palette. All right, so purple. I bet you'll love that clinking glass on glass noise. See, one of the things, one of the colors I feel like my Copics lack in general is just purple. We have blue violet, we have violet, we have red violet, but we don't have true purples. Of course, that purple isn't really dark enough anyway. <laughs> Here's turquoise. That should be nice. Oh yeah. Turquoise is gonna be a good one. Got a little cross-contamination there. Gotta clean that out really good. Now, the red... In my opinion, the violet looks really good. Purple's a little muted, but I might use it anyway. Um, turquoise is phenomenal, like it's very intense. Uh, the yellows are both good, leaf green is good, and vermilion looks good so far, but it's not dry, so you know. You watercolorists, you know, they always look good until, you know, they dry, and then it's just like, oh, it was so pretty when it was wet. Really trying to clean it out because I got gamboge coming, and that's a yellow orange. And gamboge is just not not gonna work, I don't think, as a um as an alcohol marker. It's a nice color though. I was hoping for um more of a yellow orange than just like a light orange. All right, that's crimson. That should be a nice deep red. 
And see, it's more of like an ox blood than a crimson. Crimson is like an intense red, sort of like that vermilion is, except a little more blue. And this one is a lot more blue, not just a little more blue. Now we have white, which I'm going to skip, and orange. And I'll be right back because my water pen is on empty. So now we're on orange, and that is definitely something I don't have any of in various inks. Part of the reason for that is light oranges are really, they just come off as like peach. I'm better off just using an eyedropper. Okay, so orange. Orange is about the same color as gamboge. Oh, I have some contamination, so I gotta clean it out. I think that vermilion is like the best red in the set. That will probably be the red I end up using for the test. That was brilliant red. Now we've got ultramarine. And I'm already wondering how I'm going to get my, um, my brush -o into my spray bottles without it ending up like the world's biggest mess. I gotta figure that out. Now, see if I did it liquid, that would be very easy. So what I could do is I could clean these out um, and mix a little bit of rubbing alcohol into each and then do it. Oh shoot, I put my blue back. Yeah, I'll turn right. So that might be the way to go. Cause then I could just eyedropper it into the bottles instead of trying to shake brush out powder into, uh, <laughs> oh no, that would not work. Right, we've got one more row to go, but I think I'm gonna skip black. And I will probably skip, I don't know about gray. I might do gray. Here's dark brown. It's like I'm at a dainty little tea party with these brush shakers. But they're very handy and they're clear so I don't have to check the bottle. And I was going to make swatches to go on top, like some crafty ladies do. But I mean, after I went to all this effort, there's no point in doing that. So that's dark brown. See, the prob the thing I don't like about brown dyes is you can always, or I can always see the colors it's made up of. So I honestly prefer pigmented, uh, DKB. pigmented, not, yeah, pigmented browns over, um, like dye brown, so cobalt blue. And this is really, these are really concentrated the way I'm doing it. Cause it is pretty much enough, just enough water to get it going. Cobalt blue is nice too. So brilliant red is pretty dang brilliant. Okay, so we have scarlet and then we have sea green. Um, and I am one palette short, so I might just mix it in there. Okay, so there's Scarlet. And I'm gonna clean this out. Look, isn't that pretty? Oh, you guys can't even see. I'll take a photo of it with my phone. Looks like Photoshop, not like real life because the individual pigments found their own puddles. Okay, all right, so sea green. Now sea green's a really nice blue green and I am very attracted in general to blue greens. So I probably have enough blue greens. <laughs> probably don't need another blue green uh, alcohol ink. So that is what Brescia looks like when it's all mixed together. These are what brush out, let's see if I can get. Okay, let's try this. All right, these are what brush out looks like when you let the individual pigments kind of stand alone. They're really very nice. They're also very different, so that's cool. Brush definitely has some vibrant primary colors. 
Um, if you like this sort of palette, then Brush O might be a good choice for you. So um, I'm gonna end the video here so I can start messing around with and mixing alcohol inks. <laughs> I'm Becca Hilburn. If you found this swatch video for Brush O, um, what do they call it? Crystal watercolors? They're dye-based watercolors. If you found this video helpful or useful or informative or inspiring, I would appreciate it if you A, like the, hang on, A, like the video, B, subscribe to the channel, and C, check my Patreon out. Um, the Patreon is patreon.com slash natasoup. If you want even more great content like this, like six years worth of great, oh, actually seven, coming on seven years of great content like this, you should read my blog, natasoup.blogspot.com. I'm Becca Hilburn. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.